Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Hey, you know what's an underutilized mechanic in the game? Counters. Like, yeah, we do have a ton of them. Spells, Bushido, Karakuri Yosen, we've even got bunny ear counters for crying out loud. And I know that counters are usually used to track how many times you've performed a certain action, letting you cash in that funny money for sweet prizes. But there's so much more potential that we can tap here. Magic the Gathering recently started using them as a way to provide abilities to creatures they're on, and Yu-Gi-Oh! has kind of dabbled in this area, the most prominent example being Predator Counters. But even then, the level modulation isn't a function of the counter itself, but is rather an applied effect that's a part of putting those counters on monsters. So it's less that the counters have their own special properties, and more like they have a special effect applied to them, kind of like when you make a synchro out of a Yang Zing. And while we still have a ways to go before we reach the heights of what can be a Accomplished with counter technology, I'd like to focus on an archetype that probably has the most famous counter out of all of them, uh, aside from Endymion and his Shadow Wizard Money Gang. Premiering in the August 2006 core set, Power of the Duelist, Aliens adopted the pop cultural landmarks of greys, abductions, psychic powers, and body snatchers, and rolled them all up into a theme that still hasn't quite worked out what it wants to do, but by gum is it gonna do it. By spreading around the dangerous A counters, these interplanetary invaders seek to liquefy their opponents into a viscous goo before taking hold of the battlefield with their superior technological and biological weapons. So get ready to meet the brood, see what the hive mind has in store, then see what unwitting pawns we can hypnotize into our ranks. It's time for an episode that's out of this world, welcome to Aliens Explained. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons and the fine people over at Dragon Shield. If you want to protect your cards with the strongest scales on the market that even come with their own lore while supporting the channel, use my affiliate link in the description. So what's the deal with aliens? Well, they're a series of reptile-type monsters of various attributes, and their cards fulfill a variety of roles, with a central theme being the production and usage of A counters. On their own, they don't do anything special, being spent for effects like a variety of other counters that are out there. The true horror arises when certain alien monsters hit the field that have this effect. If a monster with an A counter battles an alien monster, it loses 300 attack and defense for each A counter during damage calculation only, which I'll be referring to as the A cell corruption effect moving forward so I don't have to repeat myself every time it comes up. Now, you might think that because this effect is in parentheses that it's reminder text, telling you about the inherent function of the counter, but sadly, that's misleading at best and hostile card design at worst. The only other prominent time that parentheses are used are when a card needs to tell you if it's treated as a certain other kind of card, like how Summon Skull is treated as an Archfiend card. That's not an effect, that's just an inherent value of the card, and yet they're still using that same templating to talk about what is effectively an effect. Needless to say, I wouldn't show this to any new players. Now, the one upside of this is that the effects end up being cumulative. If you have two aliens with this effect, each A counter will now reduce by 600 points for each stat per counter. So you'll want to field as many of these kinds of aliens as possible, while also making sure your A counter production is on point. It's pretty annoying, but I like to think of it as some aliens having the psychic power to connect with the A cells that have infiltrated the bodies of other beings, and the more counters and minds that are applied to them, the more the target's body begins to become an alien their body twisting and morphing into some Cronenbergian body horror, leading to the massive reduction in stats. I know I certainly wouldn't be as good in combat if my bones were now made of jelly. See, lore isn't just good for extrapolating Albaz info, it's also about imagining horrors beyond human comprehension. So with that preface out of the way, let's get talking about our monsters. Let's get the normal ones out of the way first. Alien Shock Trooper is a level 4 earth monster with 1900 attack and 800 defense. Its flavor text reads, the aliens have used a mysterious biological substance to create a supreme race of soldiers. They do not have the natural powers of the other aliens, but can make stunning physical attacks. And with an attack stat like that, I believe it. It's a shame it doesn't come with its own A-cell corruption effect because, you know, vanilla, but would have been a really good example to exhibit how the A counters would have functioned if the debuff was inherent to the counters, but I digress. Thankfully, if you have another monster with the A cell corruption effect, it'll still apply since it only checks if an alien is battling, even if it's not itself. So as big as it looks, it's actually even bigger, which might come to you as a bit of a shock. 
Alien Ammonite is a level 1 light tuner monster with 500 attack and 200 defense, and when this card is normal summoned, you can special summon a level 4 or lower alien monster from your grave, but it's destroyed during the end phase. This is your 1 card synchro summon for a monster that's pretty good, and thankfully it doesn't impose any restrictions, so you can make anything generic up from level 5, all the way down to the fun stuff that you can find at level 2. The focus here will be getting the appropriate non-tuner directly into the grave, and thankfully newer support has gone a long way to help with this and modernize the effect, which is no small task since it takes up our precious normal summon, saving it from being just another fossil of a past format. Alien Psychic is a level 1 dark monster with 200 attack and 100 defense, and is changed to defense position when normal or flip summon, and monsters with 8 counters on them can't declare an attack. This will help you from getting run over, as well as any other monsters you have in play so long as you can stick a single A counter on that opposing monster. The problem is that it stops all monsters from attacking, so if you end up getting any A counters on your own monsters, which is more likely than you may think right now, it's also out of combat commission. So with that being said, it's probably not the best idea to keep this thing around, especially knowing what it'll do to your office space. Hey, I just made that coffee! Alien Grey is a level 2 light flip monster with 300 attack and 800 defense, and its flip effect places an A counter on a face-up monster on your opponent's side of the field. It has the A cell corruption effect, and after this card has been flipped face up, when it's destroyed by a battle and sent to the grave, draw a card. This was a pretty popular piece of card design back in the day, with flip monsters having an additional draw stapled on there after using their effect to make up for how slow they were. Take for example, Battery Man Microcell. Though the problem with this comparison is that the Battery Man got you immediate value by replacing itself with another monster, and Grey puts a counter on a monster after the battle is already done. If it's getting attacked, that is. If you can stick this on the board and flip it immediately, it's certainly a way to get a counter on board, but we have a lot better ways to accomplish this at present. Unless you're playing some kind of Prediction Princess version that leans into the flip aspect, but that's a bit of a grey area. Alien Infiltrator is a level 2 earth monster with 800 attack and 500 defense, and once per turn you can move this card to a horizontally adjacent unoccupied monster card zone. If no spell, trap, or monster cards on your opponent's side of the field are in the same column as this card, it can attack your opponent directly. Uh, <laughs> uh okay, so, um... <laughs> So Cyberdark Impact as a set was enamored with the idea of making column play important to Yu-Gi-Oh! And while Vrain's era sets would succeed in making this a reality, the design for sets in the GX era were laughably bad. Now granted, as far as direct attackers go, 800 is on the higher end of things, if we ignore things like tunes. But you know what the next highest attack is that doesn't have any kind of random restriction or hoops you have to jump through? Servant of Catabolism with 700 attack. Heck, you could also play Raging Flame Sprite instead, and after one attack is already bigger than this. Now, granted, with the application of A counters, this has the potential for a bit more survivability, which is why it's a huge wonder why the corruption effect wasn't added to this card. And in a post Mech Knight world where people play around this passively, this card has effectively been infilter aided out. Alien Dog is a level 3 light monster with 1500 attack and 1000 defense, and when you normal summon an alien monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. And when you do, place two A counters on face-up monsters your opponent controls. This is an amazing complement to any alien monster. You get a free body and two A counters in a rotation to fuel your effects. Or to make the corruption effects more impactful, it's kinda wild. And it's only gotten better with the inclusion of a particular Link 2 that got introduced back when the big Vrains pack boom was occurring. And you know, I'm just gonna say it, despite the whole HR Giger look that's going on here, this is going in the good doggo pile next to Paladin Dog and Undead Hound Horde. This is a quality doggo. Alien Mars is a level 3 fire monster with a thousand attack and defense, and the effects of effect monsters with A counters on them are negated, except for this card. This has a lot of the same issues that Psychic has, but I like this one way more, if only for the fact that effect negation is going to be way more impactful than battle control. In that way, it's like part of Plant Drago's Stapelia, but you will need a way to quickly distribute A counters, which we thankfully have a few options for now but still means you need the extra infrastructure for this to work. Its slightly higher stats are a plus, but because it lacks the corruption effect, we'll still need friends to enable the debuff to help keep this safe. All in all, it's probably still too weak to see actual play, but it does have the best little Nosferatu teeth out of all the aliens we've seen so far. Keep it up, Mars.
Alien Hunter is a level 4 water monster with 1600 attack and 800 defense, and if this card destroys a monster with an A counter by battle, it can attack once again in a row. Once again, another monster that would have benefited greatly from having the A cell corruption effect, but now it has to rely on having teammates to provide that effect for it, because at 1600, it's not consistently enabling that effect. Granted, if you can put an A counter on every monster your opponent controls and they get debuffed enough by a friend, this has the capability to sweep an entire field like Susanoo. But that's a big if. It's a cool spectacle, but expect to lose a lot of games if you plan on seeking the thrill of the hunter. Alien Hypno is a level 4 water Gemini monster, okay, now they're just messing with me, with 1600 attack and 700 defense. It follows all the usual Gemini rules, and while it's an effect monster, during your main phase, you can select a monster your opponent controls with any number of A counters on it and take control of it while this card is on the field. During each of your end phases, remove an A counter from each controlled monster, and if all A counters are removed from one of those monsters, destroy it. Okay, so, granted, this is a pretty cool effect. You do have to continue to control Hypno, which kind of blows, but as long as it remains safe, you can take control of your opponent's monsters, recharge them with A counters to keep them around with other effects, and once it runs out, the monster blows up instead of going back to your opponent. And if that monster can't be destroyed by card effects, then even better. But we can't really get away from the fact that it's a Gemini, and 1600 is not exactly a stat line I'm particularly jazzed about, as per the last section. Suffice it to say, I'm not very hip, no, to it. Alien Kid is a level 4 light monster with 1600 attack and 700 defense, and it places an A counter on all monsters special summoned to your opponent's side of the field while it's on the field. Hey, that's actually really useful! It even comes with the A cell corruption effect, so it can benefit from that ability. And lest ye forget, having multiple kids means multiple A counters get established, and multiple corruption effects that can stack. This is a neat card, and while it doesn't do much into an established board, it can exacerbate A counters that are already out there, which is more than I can say for most of our cards. Also, it comes with a tiny toy ray gun. It probably works, but it's still super cute. Alien Skull is a level 4 wind monster with 1600 attack and 1800 defense, and you contribute a face-up level 3 or lower monster on your opponent's side of the field to special summon this card to your opponent's side of the field. And if you special summon this monster this way, place an A counter on it. It also comes with the corruption effect, which might seem strange since you don't get Skull if you use that effect, but it doesn't specify who has to own a particular monster for the effect to trigger, meaning that your opponent's monsters with the corruption effect will also apply their effect making the mirror match a little goofy. This is kind of a cool piece of game design, hampered by the fact that it only works against level 3 or lower monsters, so you're not going to be able to kaiju away any actually important threats. Unless, of course, you're playing this in Predator Plants, in which case, monsters with Predator counters, that also have levels, become valid targets. Which is really refreshing, because I only ever see them fighting against each other. You know, aliens versus Predator Plants. Alien Stealth Buster is a level 4 light monster with 1700 attack and 1500 defense, and if this card is sent to the grave, you can target a face-up monster on the field and place two A counters on it. And during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you can banish this card from your grave, then target a card with an A counter on it, and destroy it. This is one of the more modern pieces of Alien support, and it's already got a lot of good things going for it. Because it triggers if sent from anywhere, this is a great target for foolishing, discarding, the works, and even comes with some built-in removal to use on subsequent turns. Heck, even the battle stats are kinda nice, though probably don't mean anything because Stealth Buster is infinitely more useful in the grave. And yet, despite this card being printed in 2021, they still forgot the corruption effect. Are you kidding me? Alien Telepath is a level 4 fire monster with 1600 attack and 1000 defense, and once per turn you can remove an A counter from an opponent's monster to destroy a spell or trap card. And, shocker, it manages to have the A cell corruption effect. Wow. But yeah, it turns A counters into back row removal, and even though this hasn't had a printing since Gladiator's Assault, it looks like it doesn't target, which is pretty sweet. But I expect nothing less from the mightiest alien of them all. Worm Catfish Whisker Lasers! Alien Warrior is a level 4 earth monster with 1800 attack and 1000 defense, and when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, place two A counters on the monster that destroyed it. And Warrior also has the A cell corruption effect. 
Before Stealth Buster, this was kind of the go-to option for enabling A counters at lower levels. Either the very nice 1800 attack was going to run something over, or it was going to give the thing that ran it over the galaxy's worst parting gift, which future warriors could take great advantage of. But there's nothing much else to say here. It's a nice bruiser that does well in battle, whether it's winning or losing, even if the destroyed by battle part of the effect hasn't aged very well. Now please, go get those nails trimmed. You may be a biologically enhanced alien soldier, but that's no excuse for poor hygiene. Flying Saucer Musiki is a level 5 light machine monster? This is about to go off the rails. With 1000 attack and 2000 defense. And while this card is face up on the field, you can select and add an alien card from your deck to your hand instead of conducting your normal draw during your draw phase. Hmm, yeah, this one doesn't scan, Chief. While having the option to tutor out any alien card, including spells and traps, sounds good, it's really just modifying your draw, which isn't highly impactful. Even in decks with more powerful archetypal cards, and let's be real here, the deck is aliens. You've probably never seen this card before, but don't get too excited to brew with it, this card is definitely not the secret sauce. Err. Alien Mother is a level 6 dark monster with 2300 attack and 1500 defense, and if this card destroys a monster with an A counter by battle and sends it to the grave, special summon the destroyed monster to your side of the field at the end of the battle phase. And when this card is removed from the field, all monsters that were special summoned by this card's effect are destroyed. So I don't think it's controversial to say that Goyo Guardian was really good, and this came out well before that did, so how come this didn't blow up? I say, knowing that you've already recognized several issues with this card. Level 6 is far too high for a main deck monster with no way to special summon itself, its attack stat is lower, it only steals monsters it destroys with A counters and not everything, despite not having the corruption effect, and if you lose mother, the rest go away. Goyo was simple to deploy and had an immediate impact. This is basically just the buggy prototype, which sucks because the design is so cool. If this ever gets a retrain, just don't even bother with the second version. We need something better, just go ahead and jump all the way to Mother 3. Alien Overlord is a level 6 dark reptile monster with 2200 attack and 1600 defense, and you can remove 2 A counters from anywhere on the field to special summon this card from your hand. And once per turn, you can place an A counter on each face-up monster your opponent controls. It also comes with the corruption effect, and you can only control one Alien Overlord. Finally, the first big boss monster of the deck. Well, the first good one, rather. And it's actually really easy to deploy. Not only can we turbo out two counters fairly quickly, it can replace those almost immediately with its own distribution effect, so it's almost free. And because it's not limited to only being special summoned by this effect, reviving this card is also an option. The only issue is that you can't put more than one of these on the board, so you sadly can't flood the field with even more counters and apply even more corruption effects. But I get it, you can't exactly have the title of Overlord and have other lords on the same level, it just doesn't work that way. Cosmic Horror Gangiel is a level 7 light monster with 2600 attack and 2000 defense, and you can tribute summon this card with one tribute if you use a monster on your side of the field that's owned by your opponent. And once per turn, you can place an A counter on a monster on your opponent's side of the field. It also has the A cell corruption effect, but you might have noticed that Cosmic Horror Gangiel is not an alien monster meaning it can help out your other aliens, but this gets no benefit. I have no idea why this was put in place when any number of other aliens could have used that effect, and I have no idea why they thought that the, at the time, big boss of aliens shouldn't even be an alien monster. It completely boggles my mind, which, I mean, it is a cosmic horror, so fair. All right, that's our main deck monsters out of the way. Let's cover a few extra deck ones. Cosmic Fortress Golgar is a level 5 light synchro monster with 2600 attack and 1800 defense, requiring alien ammonite and one or more non-tuner alien monsters as material. Once per turn, you can select any number of face-up spell or trap cards on the field and return those cards to their owner's hands, and distribute new A counters among monsters on the field equal to the number of cards returned. And also once per turn, you can remove two A counters from anywhere on the field to destroy one card your opponent controls. This is a pretty spectacular card for a number of reasons. You can take away problematic cards of your opponents while getting to make the most out of your own, recycling any continuous spell or trap cards that either get you value or are floodgates that you can flip on your opponent's turn, which you can effectively turn off by bouncing it to your hand on your turn. It's very funny. And then not only are you getting a bunch of A counters for it to use your other effects, it's got removal attached to it as well. I just wish it was easier to deploy. 
Not only do aliens have a lack of good tuner support, their single one requires the normal summon to function properly. And because it has to be specifically Ammonite, any future support that may show up has to emulate its name or get around its restriction in some other way. Here's hoping that actually does happen at some point, because this is a really sweet monster to have, especially when it comes to holding down the fortress. Alien Shock Trooper M-Frame is a Link 2 light monster with 1900 attack, requiring any two reptile monsters as material. As a quick effect, you can discard any monster to place A counters equal to its original level on face-up monsters on the field, distributed as you wish. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the grave, you can special summon non-Link reptile monsters with different names from your grave, up to the number of monsters your opponent controls with A counters. Talk about your glow-ups, this card is wild! It works with your non-alien reptiles on top of your regular so you can revive Gangiel if you want, as well as any off-theme pieces of support. And by trading in big monsters from your hand, not necessarily aliens, you can throw out a ton of counters at the drop of a hat. Don't forget, you also have Dog in the deck, so pair it with any normal summon, and that's enough materials to summon this right there. See, even if you start out as a normal monster, you can grow to be something spectacular. It just takes the right M frame of mind. Cosmic Slicer Zerol is a Link 3 light monster with 2600 attack, requiring two or more reptile monsters as material. Monsters your opponent controls with A counters are changed to defense position, also neither player can activate their effects. If this card is Link Summoned, you can add a card from your deck to your hand that has an effect that places A counters, and you can remove two A counters from anywhere on the field to immediately after this effect resolves, normal summon a reptile monster. Gosh, it is just such a shame that this isn't an alien monster, but this card is still pretty good. It baguskas any monsters your opponent controls that have A counters on them. Heck, it might even be a little better since it does stop Link monsters from activating their effects as well. Gets you your A counter cards and gets you extra normal summons, an issue that I talked about previously. Now granted, because it only gets you A counter producing cards, it doesn't actually get you alien cards, but that's about the only issue I have. This is possibly the single strongest card aliens have access to, especially when paired with M-Frame who can slap A counters on problematic monsters at quick effect speed, so with the right setup, you can really slice and dice the competition. Alright, that's all of our monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. Corruption Cell A is a normal spell card that places an A counter on a face-up monster on your opponent's side of the field. And that's it! Now, the whole point of the deck is to distribute a counter, so it makes sense you have a card like this, but it is terrible. A single counter is not worth a whole card. It's nice that we have a visual indicator of what an A cell looks like, and kind of solidifies the whole corruption angle, but it's nowhere near earning that A grade. A Cell Scatterburst is a quick play spell card that selects a face-up alien monster you control. Destroy it, and distribute new A counters equal to its level among your opponent's face-up monsters. This is basically the spell version of M-Frame's distribution effect, and because it's on a spell and not a monster, it's generally worse. And, you know, that makes sense, power creep will do that. But because it's a quick play spell, it does have the benefit of helping you dodge interaction. If your opponent tries to Valor your Overlord, for instance, you could take the hit or trade it in with Scatter Burst to distribute six more A counters on top of the ones you were going to put with its own effect. Still, I'd recommend avoiding it and finding more impactful cards. I'm sure you can find a few scattered around. A Cell Recombination Device is a quick play spell card that targets a face-up monster on the field. You send an alien monster from your deck to the grave, and if you do, place A counters on that monster equal to the level of the sent monster. And during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you can banish this card to add an alien monster from your deck to your hand. Now, while this may look like a version of Corruption Cell A with the dials cranked up a bit, it's actually way better. Not only can it put multiple counters out there, it sets up your grave, a great target for it being Stealth Buster, so you immediately get two additional counters. And at that point, you can normal summon Ammonite, Reborn the Buster, and now you have Golgar material. Or, if you don't have Ammonite, you can use the Search effect on a subsequent turn to get Ammonite, and that way it'll be a different turn, so you can trigger the Stealth Buster you revive. And because it's a quick play spell, you can even drop counters on a monster out of nowhere, so they get locked down by either Zeral or Mars. This is one of those cards where, if it was part of another archetype, it would be busted out the wazoo. But for us, it's still incredibly good. Not only for the effect, but also because we get to see the aliens in little lab coats, I love it. 
Mysterious Triangle is a quick play spell card that destroys a monster on the field with an A counter. Then you can special summon a level 4 alien monster from your deck, but it's destroyed during the end phase. Well, that's a nifty piece of removal. Shame you can't summon Ammonite since it's locked to only 4s, but it does give you material for Ammonite to use, so that's something. You can also grab monsters like Stealth Buster or Warrior to spread the counters, or you can get Telepath to deal with Pesky Back Row. And no matter what, the card you summon can still make for great Link material if it's during your turn to help you get some bonkers monsters. Also, is it just me, or do those Cosmic Horror Gangiels down there look really cute? Like a bunch of little trilobites, it's great. Totally worth having the civilization being brought to its knees. A Cell Breeding Device is a continuous spell card, and during each of your standby phases, put an A counter on a face-up monster your opponent controls. While not giving you an immediate benefit like Corruption Cell, at least this card has the decency to potentially get you multiple A counters over time for a single card, even if it is slow as molasses to accomplish. Also, now that I look about it, they look uncomfortably like the Wind Gin from Golden Sun, so I'm just gonna... move along. A Cell Incubator is a continuous spell card, and each time any number of A counters are removed from play by a card effect, place an A counter on this card. And when this card is destroyed, distribute the A counters on this card among face-up monsters. So if you want a card that'll help you maintain your A counter, uh, count, this does the job brilliantly. It may seem like most of the time you get no benefit because you have to remove A counters to fuel effects, but those counters are actually removed as part of the effect, so Incubator will help give you a little refund. Heck, if you have effects that just spend a single A counter, this makes them basically free. And then once this gets popped, you don't so much get new A counters, as you get to redistribute them as you see fit on other cards, which can help with your stat reduction effects. You can even force this by using Telepath's effect on it. But if you're fighting against aliens, make sure you go out of your way not to pop this. You wouldn't want to take the NQ bait. Code A Ancient Ruins is a continuous spell card, and each time any number of face-up alien monsters are destroyed, place an A counter on this card. And once per turn, you can remove two A counters from anywhere on the field to special summon an alien monster from your grave. Now, this is one of the deck's spiciest cards, a revival engine that gets you any alien at the cost of only two counters from anywhere on the field. Not to mention it generates its own A counters, so it's not wholly reliant on other cards to function. And while the revival is a once per turn, it is a soft once per turn, meaning multiple copies can be used in the same turn, or when combined with Golgar, allows you to bounce an already used copy of Ruins back to your hand, letting you play it again, which you can then activate again because it's treated as a whole different copy. Just be careful, because any A counters on the card will vanish if you bounce it, so try to have another source of counters available. Once again, the only disappointment here is that we have some really good non-alien monsters that we'd love to revive with this in the form of the Cosmics. But that's just something we're gonna have to live with. Much how we're gonna have to live with all the pink and purple slime that keeps coming out of the walls here. Oh, we've tried plugging it up for days now and it's still coming through. Uh, do you think this is where they got the Grimace Shake stuff from? Otherworld, the A-Zone, is a field spell card that is basically the A-Cell Corruption Effect. It just gives a 300 point debuff to any monster fighting an alien monster, though it doesn't scale with the amount of A counters on it. Not to mention it specifies it has to be your alien monster that battles in opponents, so no skull shenanigans are happening here. I guess it's nice to have some way of proccing the debuff no matter what monster is involved, but the advantage of the usual effect is that it looks small, but can quickly get out of hand with more A counters or aliens with the debuff effect. Otherworld, by contrast, is so small and provides such little utility that it's hardly worth playing. The A-Zone is certainly not an A-Force to be reckoned with. Alien Brain is a normal trap card that you can activate when a reptile monster you control is destroyed by battle with an opponent's attacking monster and sent to the grave. You take control of that opponent's monster, and if you do, it becomes a reptile type. This is another one of those time capsule cards where it was pretty good at the time, but has swiftly fallen out of favor. I mean, if you do the math, this is an even trade in card advantage. You lose a trap card and a monster, but you gain a monster while your opponent loses one. And on top of all that, it doesn't target, so you could steal some really heinous monsters with it. But it's the trigger that holds this card back. Not only does your monster have to be destroyed by battle, which is already pretty passe at this point, it has to be by your opponent's attacking monster, meaning you can't crash your own monster into theirs of your own volition to enable this. So you'd have to find a way to bait your opponent into not using removal and running into your reptiles, which isn't ever going to be consistent. If you can find a way to make that happen, you'll really have earned the title of Big Brained Player. Okay, these next few cards I want to cover all together because they share a common theme, and maybe you'll pick up on what it is. It'll be a fun little video mini game. 
Cell Explosion Virus is a normal trap card that you can only activate when an opponent's monster with an A counter declares an attack, and it destroys all attack position monsters your opponent controls. Detonator Circle A is a normal trap card that destroys a face-up monster with any number of A counters, then burns each player for a thousand damage. And Interdimensional Warp is a normal trap card that selects a monster you control and a monster with any number of A counters on it your opponent controls, and switch control of those monsters. Now if you guessed alien versions of classic cards, then congrats, you know your card history. These are basically Mirror Force, Ring of Destruction, and Creature Swap respectively, with some minor tweaks here and there for flavor and balancing purposes. The problem is that taking a good and or banned card and slapping an A counter condition on it doesn't do much for playability. Explosion Virus is pretty terrible, Detonator Circle is some okay removal if you have the setup, and Interdimensional Warp has Select, so while you get to pick the monster you get, a vast improvement over Creature Swap, it doesn't bypass targeting protection, meaning more impactful monsters are out of reach. And besides, you're never going to get any better by copying someone else's work, you've got to strike out on your own if you ever want to be that perfect cell. Crop Circles is a normal trap card that sends any number of monsters from your side of the field to the grave to activate. Select from your deck an alien monster whose level is equal to the total levels of the sent monsters and special summon it. And if you fail to find a monster to special summon, you take 2000 damage. So it's like... alien? Synchro summoning? Match up your levels? Get an alien. I suppose you could do that in theory, but really with how low-leveled many of our aliens are, it's much more efficient to trade out one monster we have for an alien of the same level. That being said, there are some wild things going on with this card's wording. See, in Yu-Gi-Oh, you're not allowed to activate a card if it would do nothing on resolution. You can't play Dark Hole on a field with no monsters, you can't activate Mystical Space Typhoon on a board with no spells or traps, and you can't play Reinforcement of the Army if you have no warriors in your deck to search. This is in stark contrast to Magic the Gathering where you're able to activate tutors and fail to find, getting nothing out of it. And Crop Circle seems to allow for this because it has the penalty for not finding a monster, but adding that part to the effect does not circumvent the rules of the game. You still need to have a viable, matching number of monsters to cash in, along with the right-leveled alien that you want to cash out, with the penalty only feasibly coming into effect if you had targets on activation, but was ripped out of your deck by some other effect before this card could resolve. It's just... It's so funny. Like, what's going on here? Was it always meant to have a fail condition that you could fall into? Was Yu-Gi-Oh meant to have a mechanic like fail to find at some point? I I'm really losing it here. Konami representatives, please contact me. I'd love to know what's going on here. Planet Pollutant Virus is a normal trap card that tributes an alien monster to destroy all face-up monsters without A counters your opponent controls. And until the end of your opponent's third turn after this card's activation, put an A counter on each monster they summon. Now, you might be wondering why this didn't make it into the batch of cards from earlier, to which I would say this is more of an addition to the Virus lineup rather than a remix of an existing one. This card is kinda bonkers for the theme and should be in basically every build. It's a board wipe on demand that sadly misses out on anything that already has an A counter on it, but is a small price to pay for ripping up a field out of nowhere, then ensuring all of your opponent's monsters will have counters for you to play with over the next few turns. Basically, this is a really solid card, so make sure you don't miss out on it. That being said, something I learned while writing up this script is that the city being shown here is the one that we see ruined in Mysterious Triangle. It's hard to place a lot of the landmarks, but that tower over there is unmistakably the same one as the big one found at the far end of the triangle. How cool is that? Orbital Bombardment is a normal trap card that sends an alien monster from your side of the field to the grave to destroy a spell or trap card on the field, because presumably MST was limited at the time and they were just really desperate for back row removal. Um, no. Nah, just, no. Nah. Brainwashing Beam is a continuous trap card that selects a monster with at least one A counter your opponent controls and take control of that monster. During each of your end phases, remove an A counter from that controlled monster, and if all A counters are removed from that monster or that monster is destroyed, destroy this card. This might sound pretty familiar if you remember Alien Hypno, and that's because this is almost the exact same effect, though this card only gets one monster and doesn't self-destruct the monster when it runs out of counters. But it's probably more reliable since you, you know, 
don't have to normal summon this. Whether or not you run this over Crackdown is going to be up to how consistently you feel you can get A counters on your opponent's monsters so you can take the sweetest picks, since you're still able to keep all their capabilities under Beam, something that Crackdown can't do. Though if you want to get a body to tribute over for something like Gang Yell, maybe consider just running the funny Goemon card. I know this is part of the theme itself, but don't get tricked into playing it just because of that. I mean, you know you're your own person, and you're capable of making your own deck-building choices, right? Right? Mass Hypnosis is a continuous trap card that you can only activate if you control an alien monster. Select and take control of up to three of your opponent's monsters that each have a number of A counters on them. And this card is destroyed during the end phase of the turn it's activated. So where Brainwashing Beam is a long-term option for a single monster, this is a short-term option to take a lot of monsters. And honestly, this can be a win condition all on its own. Taking three monsters means you gain a lot of attackers and material while stripping your opponent of blockers. And with Overlord's ability to put a counter on every face-up monster your opponent controls all at once, you're looking at a pretty substantial game ender. And if you don't end up clearing with this, you can link off the monsters you stole, then bounce this back to hand with Golgar so you can use it again. But... Being a trap card that relies on A counters is a huge negative in terms of playability, but there's something worth exploring here. And I'm not just talking about how this and Cell Explosion Virus confirm that aliens are in the same storyline as anything that has the Goblin Attack Force. That's a whole separate video. Alright, that's all the alien cards, but what do we do with them? Well, we've got a pretty sizable pool of strong monsters that can help us push for game, and a few control tools to help us out of any sticky situations, so we should lean into the mid-range playstyle with a heavy focus on aggro. Generic support to keep our opponent on their toes is nice, but we can also raise our own ceiling by using a variety of niche reptile support. So what can we play to help them out? Well, despite being a reptile deck, I'd avoid playing Snake Rain in a purer variant. So far, only Stealth Buster has a good Grave effect, with additional bodies only being good once we get Code Ancient Ruins online, as well as getting us a target for Ammonite. However, this doesn't mean we should disregard Snake Rain's best home, Ogduotics. Naya can send Stealth Buster directly to the Grave by itself, or can get you Ogduotic spells and traps. And while that may seem restrictive thanks to the name, Ogduotic Serpent Strike works with all reptiles, and since aliens have a variety of attributes, it'll fit right in. Naya's Reflection Nunu is also pretty good, getting any of your Dark Reptiles into the grave while giving you free material to help make King of the Feral Imps for more searches. And while good Dark Aliens are hard to come by, the newly released Nephrobis is easy to summon and provides even more free summons from the grave, including Ogdu Abyss, which is a really powerful board wipe. Reptilians are also a great source of support for the theme. Echidna is an easy to make link too that can search you reptiles. Lamia and Yami are great at defanging your opponent's monsters while providing you with more material. And Melusine is an obscene boss monster with great protections and a non once per turn permanent attack reduction. Code Ancient Ruins is a very important card for the deck when it comes to maintaining advantage, which is why it's a lightning rod for removal. So consider running Barricade Borg Blocker. Not only is it able to recover lost Code A's, it can protect the ones you have. The attack stat being low is an issue, but we have a number of ways to mitigate this. For one, if we play Reptilands, that's a great way to zero out our opponent's monsters. But we can also take advantage of Zeral to keep non-links from attacking into it, especially if M-Frame can ping them with counters at a moment notice. Damage equals Reptile is a popular piece of support, but um, don't play it. It's not good. What you should be running is Offering to the Snake Deity. It's like Sword Soul Blackout, without the huge infrastructure of worm effects to back it up. Still, it's great removal, very easy to recommend. Viper's Rebirth is also an outstanding card, just uh, make sure you only run it when you're positive you're on pure reptiles, or that you know you can banish anything that's not a reptile from your grave. I'd probably get a lot of flack if I didn't mention Interplanetary Invader A. It's pretty clearly an overgrown A cell, so it's in the canon, but doesn't really do anything for us. Like, you can't even force this with attacking, so since it works almost exactly like Alien Brain, you should run that instead. You might even take less life point damage in the process. You probably shouldn't play Arubinos, the Avatar of Malice, but the stat reduction is thematic and funny. But a card you might want to consider is Knight Sword Serpent. While Snake Rain isn't very good in pure aliens, if you splash in the other archetypes, there are a plethora of good grave effects in reptiles, so you might as well tack in a free level 4 monster to, once again, help you make King of the Feral Imps. As for a silly tech pick, try having a little fun with Tainted Treasure of Treason, Snake Eye. 
While the rest of this theme was just recently announced, this card in particular has some funny interactions with Cosmic Fortress Golgar. You can either push an opponent's monster into the back row, making it valid for bouncing, or push your own monster back into your own back row that you want to recycle. And even if you don't have that combo, it's still a great way to turn monsters into vanilla back row, it's pretty sweet. And that's all I have to say about Aliens. This theme still has a long way to go, and while recent support was really good, it's going to take a dedicated overhaul for this deck to see any play outside of Reptile Good Stuff lists, which in and of themselves are already struggling. And you know, while they're at it, they should also consider stronger branding. You can't just let the fairies take your design like that and make Zeta Reticulant, it's just not okay. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are Aliens the Apex Predators, or is it Game Over Man? And which one is your favorite? Honestly, I know it's a bit of a vanilla pick, but they nailed Shock Trooper's design. Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, make sure to like the video to show your support, subscribe if you haven't already to boost the big happy number, and share this video with somebody you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you in part by Dragon Shield. When you want to protect your cards with the power of Dragon Scales, get some sweet lore for them, and support the channel, check out my link in the description to get started. Today's episode was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander Green Knight, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Ada Basilisk, Adam Zagidel, Andrew Newman, A Random Pup, Avi Chali, Kane Senpai, Chibi Gohan, Danny Bound, Eric, Aaron the World Breaker, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Hairbear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Iskander711, John, Jordan, Julia Sneezer, Mana Charge, Marluxia is a Girl, Molly Renata, Nathan Vig, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, RJ the Jank Monarch, Sammy Haim, Sir Knight JCB, Sky Buster Leo, Sophie, apparently, The Wizard Moose and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders Almento 5010, Aaron, Ariel Kersey, Beluga Masta, Blue Gem, Chaz Ghost, Chris Kessler, Corbinisms, Drakenwald, Eki Bullock, Emini, Eva Padilla, Hake Boyajian, Herbal D, In the House Like Carpet, Inblink, Jester Designs, Kale the Dragon, Carp, Kivon Public, King Scarlet Yu Gi Oh!, Lemon Yu Gi Oh!, Lord Whoop De Doo! Manga Pages, Mary and James E. Piccata, Matt Simmons, Mega Combi, Michael Shimabukuro, Nadia McCarthy, Nitromo, Ruxith Sarani, Shizuka Nijimura, Star Lord 777, Stephen Williamson, The Legendary Raven, Tucker Ordorn, and Zal Dureka, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh's archetypes, participate in monthly custom card reviews, and just keep the lights on in general, please consider becoming a patron by using that link in the description, or by becoming a YouTube member. And if you'd like to see another video about interplanetary threats bent on modifying their bodies to conquer all who stand in their way, check out this video I made covering mutants. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Buh bye bye And this card is destroyed during the end phase of the turn it's activated. <laughs> the script says, this card is destroyed during the end phase of the turn it's destroyed. I'm so good at script writing.